Well, John Daniels, thank you for joining us. And uh, coal ash as an issue is perhaps uh, no hotter than it is in North Carolina. Yeah. And uh, tell us a little bit about your role with the advisory board and what you're doing in terms of looking at some of the incidents that have transpired within our state and then where we're going in the future. Yeah, no, you, it's, a, it's a great point to start. I mean, if you think about it, again, uh, coal and coal ash have been around for a long time. And so um, what's really changed, of course, is earlier this year when we had a uh, essential, which was um, a relatively modest impact in comparison uh, with, with accidents, uh, the Dan River spill. Um, and that really precipitated everyone to really look at this issue. So Duke Energy in particular uh, has recommitted itself to make sure they're doing uh, everything to ensure that the best possible resources are brought to bear on this, um, intellectually included. And, and that uh, was sort of the impetus for the advisory board, the national advisory board that I've assembled. And likewise, of course, the state of North Carolina uh, introduced its legislation. So we're at a point where we have the nation's largest utility um, now in a leadership role on how to manage uh, its ash uh, for disposal and how to promote its reuse. And likewise, the state of North Carolina with the legislation that's passed, first in the nation type of legislation that encompasses both use and disposal. Um, so it's very important that uh, as we work forward, we, we get this right. And one of the ways you do that is you bring the best minds to bear. So that was really what uh, I believe led Duke to reach out to UNC Charlotte. So um, here at our university, we have more faculty engaged in coal ash related research than any other um, institution in the country. So it's uh, sort of auspicious that we're right here and, and able to respond to these sorts of things. And so the idea was to, okay, let's have a board and what sort of expertise do we need to review what we're doing how these ash basins are closed, how the ash is used. And so when thinking about that, you need engineers, you need scientists, you also need folks who have an understanding of how um, decisions can have an effect on uh, the communities in which, they, uh, in which they operate. And so we identify these experts and uh, they come from all across the country and we meet periodically to review the strategy and the implementation of that strategy in the context of the evolving regulations and under the framework as laid out by the Coal Ash Management Act of 2014. And, and so as an advisory board, what what is your product if, other than advice? Or what, what does that look like and yeah. who, who receives it and right. what will be the outcomes of your work? Yeah, so this is primarily um, output in terms of review comments and, and advice and input to Duke Energy. So. Um, and we should probably distinguish in the state of North Carolina, we have what's called the Coal Ash Management Commission. Mm -hmm. And that is a North Carolina body intended to look at the ash basins across the state and to rank them uh, according to high risk, intermediate risk, and low risk, and, um, and to go on and form that with their recommendations. Uh, this uh, board that I've assembled is uh, providing input to Duke, mm -hmm. and it's in North Carolina, but it's across their entire uh, territory. And so, so our product is, uh, informs not just what they do in North Carolina, but throughout the country. And because they're sort of at the leading edge of this, um, this the kinds of um, recommendations that we make, if you generalize those and, and distill out the, the critical uh, decision points, this will have an impact, uh, we believe, industry-wide on the, for example, the uh, basis by which you decide to move ash versus leave it in place. And if you're gonna leave it in place, how do you do that? Uh, all of these sorts of decisions. And very, very quickly, um, tell us a little bit about um, your involvement and your awareness and particularly um, in the academic setting here at UNC Charlotte. What's happening in the area of reuse of coal ash? And yeah. is, that, is that a viable um, frontier that right. can make a dent in the issue of how to what do, what do we do with coal ash? Yeah, well, this is a great uh, question, and I should remind listeners that uh, coal ash really is a construction product. And uh, for example, the world's tallest building, the Burj Khalifa in uh, United Arab Emirates, 
Um, the foundation of that uh, includes fly ash, and it was selected not um, to reuse a material, but because of its technical abilities to give you enhanced strength and reduce the temperature uh, while curing. And so it really is a construction material. But to your point about putting a dent, uh, frankly, the status quo is such that if you think about how much ash we have and you think about the market for it, uh, it's not going to make a significant dent unless we have significant research. You have 150 million tons of coal fly ash distributed across the state in various ponds as well as various landfills. In addition, we generate another 2 million tons of ash every year. The market for use of fly ash in concrete is approximately a million tons per year right now. So that barely uses the production ash, let alone the ash that's distributed across the state. So if you really want to move the needle, uh, we're going to have to invest in some additional R&D uh, to make that happen. And part of that's going to occur through the uh, RFP that the legislation uh, encouraged Duke to, uh, to do, but we really need to have a sustained investment with a 10-year vision of what this needs to look like if you want to move the needle. Candidly, without that sort of sustained investment, uh, you're going to have a lot of ash just sitting in uh, essentially landfills. Well, coal ash as an issue is certainly not going to go away, but uh, the news that will be coming from your work and, and finding solutions uh, is something that I think we're all going to want to keep close tabs on, and we'll look forward to hearing from you again somewhere down the road and, and hear more about your work with the National Board and then in your research here at UNC Charlotte. So thank you very much for spending a few minutes with us now, and we'll talk to you again soon, I'm sure. It's a pleasure. Thank you.